Three years ago, I made one of my favorite photography purchases when I chose to upgrade from a Nikon D3200 to a Nikon Z6. One field of photography that I was particularly interested in when purchasing this camera was astrophotography. Hello everybody, I'm Will Cheney. If you're in the field for a new camera for astrophotography, this is the video for you. In this video, I'm gonna walk through some of the key specs for the Nikon Z6 for astrophotography, what I like about this camera, the dislikes that I have about it, and then towards the end, I'll talk about some of the alternatives that Nikon makes to this camera. Let's jump in. The first spec that I wanna walk through with the Z6 is the price. So if you're just looking for the body and the current time is the beginning of 2022, uh, the price for this is $1,596. And if you're looking to buy the kit, which pairs it with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens is $2,196. So not a terrible price. The next feature to highlight is with this, the Z series cameras, Nikon's made the switch from the F mount to the Z mount, which is a slightly bigger mount than what you might be used to if you're coming off of an F mount. And this has its advantages, but I'll get into those later. The next important spec to take a look at that everybody always wants to know is how many megapixels is the sensor. And for the Z6, it comes in with 24.5 megapixels. As for the sensor in this camera, it's a full frame sensor. So you're gonna be able to get uh, you know, those bigger shots than what you can with a crop sensor. Uh, and it is a CMOS stack sensor. When shooting with this camera, you're gonna be able to shoot uh, in RAW and also in JPEG in multiple different levels of combinations with those. And you'll also, one thing to note since we're talking about, you know, file formats is your storage. And something to note on the storage is that this camera, along with the Z7, also only have uh, one memory card slot and they're both for an XQD or a CF Express memory card. Uh, but that's definitely one thing to note that it only has a single memory card slot. An additional spec to look at on this camera is that it has an electronic shutter and that will help reduce the vibration that you'll get in the camera when you're shooting in the field, which can be helpful on long exposure shots. Speaking of the shutter, another thing to note is that it can shoot from 1 8,000th all the way up to 30 seconds for an exposure. And on top of that, there's also a time mode and a bulb mode for those times that you want to shoot longer than 30 seconds. One of my favorite specifications for this camera in terms of astrophotography is the metering range on it. This camera can go as low as negative four EV all the way up to 19 EV. So there's a pretty wide dynamic range there when shooting and that negative four really helps you, you know, be able to get into low light uh, scenarios. On top of that, the native ISO range on this camera is 100 all the way up to 51,200. Now I don't recommend shooting astrophotography at 51,200. I typically shoot around 3,200 to 6,400 and recently going as high as 10,000. However, it is nice that at those values that the images aren't as grainy as what some of the older models could be. And along with those low light sensitivity settings, the focus detection with this camera is phenomenal. You can go down to negative 3.5 EV uh, with autofocus and there's even a setting to go down as far as negative 6 EV. The next spec that you'll want to take advantage of is the ability to set your Kelvin temperature for your white balance. So that'll allow you to get your white balance to about what you want in the field and it's one less thing you have to worry about later in your post-processing. Moving on to some of the physical features of this camera, the body alone weighs in at 1 pound 4.7 ounces and the dimensions on it are 5.3 inches by 4 inches by 2.7 inches. As for the LCD screen on the back it is a tilting TFT touchscreen. Unfortunately it doesn't swivel out, it only tilts back and forth and can extend a little bit. The next thing that I want to note on this camera is the operating temperature that's listed by Nikon. According to their specs it can operate from 32 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. But I'll put a caveat on there because I know that I've operated it outside of those ranges. I've shot at 113 degrees in Big Bend National Park, and I've also shot at least down into the teens um, in Grand Teton. So I know it can work outside of that, but just be aware that those are the listed specs from Nikon. And then finally, because, you know, thinking about temperature that would eventually have an effect on your batteries, the battery life from this camera for me has been great. A Nikon lists that you can get about 310 shots on it. I find that a single battery pack is more than enough for me to get through a couple of hours of shooting. Coming up next, I'm gonna go over my likes and dislikes about the 
the Nikon Z6 for astrophotography. And then I'm gonna share with you some quick thoughts on the other Nikon Z cameras that are available at this time. Stay tuned, but first like this video and subscribe and let me know down in the comments if there's any specs that you have questions about so far. So as for my likes with this camera, uh, the first thing that I like for astrophotography is that it's a full frame camera body. Um, the main reason for that is when you're starting to look at star trails, uh, the bigger that that sensor is, the longer you can shoot before your stars start to trail. So having a full frame sensor versus a crop frame sensor is really going to help you out with getting more detail in your shots when you're out in the field. The next thing that I really like is the low light autofocus feature. This is going to help you out when you're taking photos and you're trying to get your foreground in focus. It's not going to necessarily help you with the stars, but at least when you're out in the field, you can have a little more confidence that your foreground is going to be in focus. The third thing that I really like about this camera is that it's a Z mount. If you're coming from an F mount, I know that that's a little bit of a hassle because now you're looking at eventually probably trying to upgrade all of your glass to more expensive stuff. The difference in size in these lenses between that going from the F mount to the Z mount and the reduction in that size and the weight for me is something that I really like. And it's also opened the door for being able to have those larger apertures available at a smaller size for the lens. The next thing that I wanna mention on it that I like is the electronic shutter. I already mentioned you know, that it can help you reduce those vibrations. Um, and that's something, like I said, you're out shooting, you want as little vibration as possible whenever you're taking these long exposure, you know, 10, 15 second long photos, and that's gonna help you get a clearer image. One thing that really drew me towards the Z6, and I think at this point would keep me from upgrading to a Z9, would just be the size. Um, to me, it fits well in the hand. It's larger than the D3200 that I had, but it seems to fit really well. And also the weight of it's not that large either. Uh, so for me, traveling, uh, um, I like to be able to just travel with a single bag. So when I'm getting on international airlines and I'm trying to fly with just a carry-on and there's a weight restriction, it's helping me to bring down that weight of my bag. And it's also allowing me to fit other things in my bag like clothes that I need to have. Adding on to that weight for me, the Z6 was also a great choice because I wanted at the time to also get a star tracker. And I needed something that was light enough that a five or $600 star tracker could handle the camera paired with a telephoto lens. And so far I've been shooting with the Z6 with a Sigma 150 to 600. And I've had no performance issues going up to, you know, a minute, minute and a half, even sometimes up to two minutes if I get my alignment good. Uh, so the weight really helps out there when, when you're wanting to start dabbling in those deep space objects. Next on my list of likes would be the price. I know that the $1,600 price tag on this camera does sound steep, but whenever you look at you know, going to other cameras. So if you're looking at a crop sensor, you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck for astrophotography by spending the extra money to get this camera. And you're still gonna be saving compared to going to something like the Z6 II or the Z7, or then, you know, even looking at the Z9 or some of the other Sony and Canon options. With respect to low light, that's something that uh, this camera performs really well at. And it was one of the reasons that I went with this camera. So looking at, you know, the ability for it to shoot at 10,000 ISO, um, also shooting 3200, 6400. Um, those ISO settings all do really well with the night photography, especially when you take that Milky Way and you stack it with a foreground that's, you know, shot under some different conditions at 400 or 800 ISO, you get really pretty images. Alongside the performance at ISO, you've got to talk about the 35 millimeter sensor in here. So because you actually have the smaller count on the megapixels, so 24 and a half versus the 30s and 40s that you see in other cameras, your pixels are actually larger. So how that plays a role in your low light sensitivity is that because your pixels are larger, you're now able to bring in more light into that single pixel versus something that has more megapixels, but they're gonna be tinier. So keep that in mind. And that's you know one thing that I really like about this camera. Playing into that, 24 and a half megapixels, it also makes your file size smaller. So when you're looking at, you know, taking a couple hundred pictures a night, you're now taking smaller files versus something like a Z7 that's gonna have a larger file size for each shot that you take. And that may not sound like that big of a deal, but when you start looking over the lifetime of the camera and the amount of storage you're also gonna have to keep at home, I know they always say that storage is cheap, but it does add up over time as you start making upgrades to your computer system at home. So talking about wanting to get the foreground in focus, one setting that this camera has is built-in focus shifting. 
So what that'll do is it'll take a bunch of different shots at different depths of field, and you'll be able to then stack those in Photoshop or Lightroom later, and you'll get a foreground that's completely in focus from front to back. Sticking with focusing, another thing that works well on all of the Nikon Z cameras that I've seen so far is that you can easily get into infinity focus for the stars just by turning your camera um, off and then back on or even just coming back from being in the off mode. If you have it paired with a Z-series lens and you also have the saved focus setting turned off. And the final setting that I really like in this camera is the built-in long exposure noise reduction. A lot of cameras have that, but it's just nice to have and I'm glad that they kept with it. Uh, it's something that I'll use in the field if I'm just trying to get a single image of the Milky Way, kind of like I did with this one here. So I could probably keep going on with more likes about this camera, but a lot of those would all be focused outside of astrophotography. So for now, let's jump into the dislikes. So the first thing that I dislike about this camera, and it's really a gripe I have about a lot of cameras, is that they don't just have a built-in intervalometer. This camera does have a time-lapse function, and for most cases, it'll work out fine because you can shoot at that maximum exposure of 30 seconds. However, I just think it would be an easy thing for camera companies to implement since all it is is a timer. The next thing that I dislike about this camera and so far all the way up until the Z9 came out, uh, it's been one of my gripes is that the LCD on the back only tilts. The reason why it bothers me so much is there's a lot of times when I'm shooting the Milky Way that I go into a portrait mode. Um, and when you've got the camera pointed up at the sky, it just gets hard and awkward to bend over a lot to continually be trying to check what your photos are at. And sometimes it just, it just gets annoying and I don't know why they couldn't just make the LCD swivel in that direction as well. The next dislike that I have about this camera, and it's kind of funny because it has to do with the Z mount lens, but I really hate the FTZ adapter. For me, whenever I bought the kit and I was using the 24 to 70, and then I would want to change over to a different lens, I'd have to make sure that I was always additionally swapping the FTZ around because I also had multiple F mount lenses. So you have to not only swap lenses, but then move that FTZ adapter around between the lenses when you want to use the different one. And it's just something that I found, I was always fumbling around with out in the field. And um, so I'm slowly trying to get away from that. Speaking of Z mount lenses, that brings me up to another dislike that I have. And really this is just more of waiting for things to catch up. Nikon over the last three years has been adding more Z mount lenses to their lineup, but I'm still waiting for a company like Sigma to come out with their Z mount. It's been several years at this point and I'd like to see what some of those alternative Sigma art series lenses have to offer with the camera. The next thing that I dislike about the camera is just that it only has the single memory slot. So far in my photography experience, I've never had to deal with losing images off of a memory card, but I do understand how that can be a frustration for professionals. And I know if I was ever out in the field and I lost all the images off of a memory card, I know I'd be upset. So I do think Nikon messed it up by only putting the one, but they did correct that in the Z6 II. The next thing that I don't like about the Z6 is the battery life. In most cases, it doesn't hurt me out in the field. However, I do hate that it just means that I've got to carry more batteries with me when I travel, or I've got to go with the alternative option of eventually buying the hand grip that can go on the side of it, which is just gonna make my bag more bulky. And finally, one gripe I have, and this was really just after learning that it was gonna come out on the Z9, is that the buttons on the back of the camera don't have an option to be lit up. Um, there's a lot of times out in the field where it just means I have to turn my headlamp on. And that's just something that I think would be nice that the Z6 could have had on it, but isn't something that necessarily would have ever turned me away from the camera. So the last thing I want to talk about with this camera is a couple of alternatives that you could go with from Nikon. So the first one is the Nikon Z6 II that came out not long after the Z6. This camera is a $400 increase in price, so for just the body it comes in at $1,966, but you do get increased processing power with the dual X-Speed 6 processor. So that's gonna give you a little bump in your frames per second when you're shooting at a higher frame rate. One major upgrade that they did make to the actual body was this one comes with two card slots instead of a single memory card slot. And then finally, the Z6 II does perform a little bit better in the low light autofocus, so it goes down to negative 4.5 EV instead of the negative 3.5 that the Z6 does. So the next camera that I want to talk about is the Z7 II. So for this one you're actually going to have a $1,400 increase 
Over the Z6, it comes in at $2,996. With the Z7 II, you do get an increase in the megapixels at 45.7 megapixels. However, because of that, your low light performance goes down. So for the Z7 II, you only get a negative three EV on the autofocus in low light. And then with the Z7 II, another feature to take note of is that you do get a little bit more battery power because they upgraded the battery system for this one. Uh, so Nikon says that you'll get 360 shots versus the 310 that you would get with the Z6. Up next, we'll actually go down a step from the Z6 and take a look at the Z5. So the Z5, just for the kit, so you would actually get a lens with this, comes in at $1,596. So that's actually a really good price point for what you're getting out of this camera. It has the same megapixels that the Z6 does at 24 and a half, but the one drawback is it's not gonna be as fast as the Z6. So if you wanna do other things like wildlife photography or start dabbling in sports photography, you are gonna be hindered with the speeds that you can get out of the camera. But at that price point, 1596, I think it is a decent alternative to the Z6 and is something that you should take a look at and see if it fits your needs. And then finally, I wanna jump all the way to the high end since the Z9 just came out. That camera body itself comes in at a price of 5,496 six dollars currently so that does definitely put it into a different price category than the other three cameras that I just talked about. However, with that, you do get some bells and whistles uh, that come with it for astrophotography, one of them being a starlight autofocus mode. So that's supposed to help you get better focus in low light scenarios. Another thing, if you're looking at that camera for doing other things than astrophotography, it's a really fast camera, so it'll be really good for uh, wildlife, high-speed action sports. Uh, there was even recently pictures going around of somebody that captured an image of a bullet coming out of a gun with it. So super fast camera. As you would expect in a camera in this class, it does come with a two card memory slot. Uh, so that's an upgrade from the Z6. Uh, the one downside to me that I've seen with this camera so far is just the size of it. Uh, it's a lot heavier and a lot larger than the Z6. Wrapping things up, I think the Z6 is a fantastic camera for shooting astrophotography and nightscapes. Thanks to its 24.5 megapixel full frame sensor, it performs really well at low light and combine that with the new Z mount, you'll be able to get larger aperture lenses at a smaller form factor. This camera has pretty much everything you need in a $1,600 camera body to get great photos of the Milky Way. Pair its relatively small size and weight with a star tracker and a telephoto lens and you'll be well on your way to exploring deep space objects. Also, if you're thinking about purchasing, I'd really appreciate it if you use my affiliate links down below to help support me and my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe while you're still here. And if you're still thinking of going with the Z6, you'll wanna check out my video comparing the Nikon Z 14 to 24 millimeter F2.8 and the Nikon Z 20 millimeter F1.8 lens for astrophotography. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.